Hey guys, Jessica Godamo here, and I'm doing a uh, tutorial video on how to make a great stop motion animation video. And um, these are things, when I first got into stop motion animation, I watched a lot of other people's work and I took notes. I took notes on what I liked and what I didn't like and what really made them stand out. And I highly recommend you do that yourself. But um, here's some of the things that I've learned that I use in the making of my series, Good and Father of Peace. And I have my friend, Isaiah, who's the cameraman, and he can show himself on camera. I am uh, teaching him this stuff today, so I asked him to be the cameraman while I teach you guys, too. So, I call these, the first three things I call the, the three S's. The three S's. Scale, story, and sound. If you look at this movie set, and you can get close, there is scale. You know, um, the scale isn't always perfect sometimes. Um, but I try as hard as I can to have scale. And the truth is, there's a big difference between this guy here fighting on a military base built around him and this guy here on my table. Now, I could do a stop motion animation equally as awesome. I could have all kinds of cool combat and just cool special effects with Adobe After Effects and whatnot, but the truth is, it will never feel like a giant robot, especially with my tea mug here. It'll never feel like a giant robot in combat. And so people might go, oh wow, that stop motion was really good, he's really good. But they'll never get wrapped up into the realism of it because the coffee mug ruins it, let's face it. So back here, you have scale. You know, and I have a couple random things on here because we're not filming just yet, but um, it's seen in the middle of filming, and if you don't look at anything that's not supposed to be on here, I mean, everything's built on a giant robot scale. And whether you're doing Lego animation, or uh, dolls, or whatnot, you want to have scale. Unless, perchance, that your story is actually taking place in the human world, and your action figures have come alive, in which case, this is just fine. The second S is story. If there's no story, what happens is people watch your stop motion animation and they go, Well, that was really cool. What else is on? Give Them Father of Peace, the first release, took more than two years for part two to come out. That was a lot longer than I ever planned, but I worked three jobs and uh, that just didn't have the time. I was always working on it, but it took forever. And it frustrated me more than it frustrated anybody else. But you guys, the fans, stuck through. Why? Because there was a story. You needed to know what happened to Joshua Wolf. And I'm not trying to brag about my own series. I'm just saying that when there's a story, people will remember it. If there is no story, they go on and watch the next YouTube video. So if you really want to have a series, or not even necessarily a series, just an animation that makes people remember you and makes you popular on YouTube, you need some kind of story, even if that story ends at the end of your one film. That story is what makes people remember. The next S is sound. Now sound is not absolutely necessary, that's why it's number three. But sound effects do a lot more. You can get sound effects free off the internet. You don't have to steal them, you don't have to you know, do whatever. You can also buy sound packs cheap off eBay or off the internet. So don't, don't count yourselves out. Sound effects are free all over the internet. And when I don't have a certain sound, I go find it. So uh, that's the three S's. Next, let's cover Sticky Tack. Sticky Tack is one of the most ama amazing things ever invented. And this is important because when you're doing stop motion animation, if there's a minor earthquake because you bump the table, you don't want everything to fall off. This guy's Sticky Tacked. This guy's Sticky Tacked. This guy's Sticky Tacked. This guy should be sticky tacked. In fact, I was animating right next to him uh, for a scene for Destroy the Unicorn. Um, and he moved because he wasn't sticky tacked down. It wasn't that I really bumped him hard or anything, but that he just shook. He got bumped just a little bit and he moved. And so sticky tack can really hold your stuff down. I'm going to be filming a scene where lasers hit this guy. And what I'll do is... I'll crop it so that you never see the blue sticky tack. 
and you can do that. And so Sticky Tack is incredibly useful. It can also keep your props down. This and this. These are all held down with Sticky Tack. That way, if you bump the mobile suit hanger, it doesn't go anywhere. So, and because you, you don't want to glue it down permanently, because otherwise uh, you're in trouble. It's there permanently, and you never get to reuse your props. Another thing is lighting. Now, most people will just uh, try and film on their table or something like that, and then they run into this problem that their lighting is really yellow. It gives this yellow effect to your, an to your animation or your video. Now, obviously for practice, that's fine, but if you're really trying to make a production, make sure you get reveal light bulbs. And uh, 100 watt is the best you can get. Make sure your lamps can support it. Your room may get a little hot. This whole room is a studio, and there's a light here. Here, another one here, here, there, there, another one, and uh, one over here. Now my movie set is large, so I need several lights to light the entire thing. And uh, you can adjust the brightness on your camera as you're filming, but these lights give it a natural look. These are kind of like daylight bulbs. That's another call word for them. And so they look like daylight when they're on, versus your standard yellow soft white 40 watt bulb which uh, makes everything look very very yellow. Lighting is important. You might be saying I don't know how much. Oh how much they cost? Yeah, just Reveal cost. light bulbs really aren't that expensive. They're you don't have to put out for them but they're not like expensive light bulbs. And they really don't cost much more than the regular ones. So. If you have questions Isaiah just ask. So. Okay. Another thing that we need to uh, go over is effects lighting. Now you might be saying, well, I thought this was a stop motion tutorial. Honestly, there are lots of good stop motion tutorials how to do stop motion animation. We'll get to that. But um, they never tell this stuff. And so I'm trying to teach the other stuff that you don't learn in the stop motion animation tutorial videos. Stop motion animation itself isn't that hard. Making a great one is. So the next thing I want to go over is effects lighting. Now I've learned this from others actually. This wasn't my concept. But you buy a, a flashlight and several flashlights is really useful. The more flashlights you get, even the better. But um, for instance, when the eye field kicks in, the beams are being deflected by this guy, I'm going to use a black light from this flashlight here. And it gives it a totally different effect. It might not look that amazing right now, but when it's in picture form, you can do a lot. So this guy has a machine gun in his hand. Well, that's cool. And we can even edit in special effects with various programs or even GIMP, which is free. But um, look now. Now it looks like a machine gun actually firing. And so you do that picture by picture you alternate, you know, light, no light, light, no light. You can have machine gun fire on your your army men, on basically whatever. You could use that for lasers. You know, obviously, uh, I use Gundam's various beam saber parts as lasers, and I got that idea from others as well, like uh, my friend Raven. But uh, that's kind of what it'll look like. I light these up. I also usually highlight them in GIMP, but that's kind of an After Effects thing. Right now we're trying to talk about practical lighting effects. And this was just like a $10 flashlight off eBay. In fact, it might have been $5 and I got it with free shipping. It also has a laser, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to shine it into the camera because I'm not sure if that will hurt the camera, but there's a laser. And uh, that can make for some cool effects. It's a little hard to hold straight, so it might, sometimes it takes a couple tries. And there's various kinds of flashlights as well, you know, there's the headlamps. Just try stuff out. This is a red flashlight. Now my set's so well lit that it's kind of hard to see. But uh, it does have a cool effect. And I have used it in animation. But uh, flashlights, those are great for, for having special effects, lighting effects. Gives it that gun or explosion feel. And... Uh, that's most of what I have. Isaiah, do you have any questions? None? Okay, well that's going to conclude our tutorial video on how to make a great stop motion animation. You know, obviously, in case I, anyone needed me to cover this, the way you do stop motion animation is, 
You have a digital camera. Oh, a tripod. What? Tripods are really important. If you can have a real tripod and not just one of these, you'll do a lot better. I guess I was ending just a little too soon. I didn't write down a few things. But um, these, they move. So you press the button, your camera shakes. And so what you end up with is a shaky animation. Even if you hold it as still as possible and take your picture, the camera is still going to move a little bit. And so your animation will look like this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool when you're having like a large robot walk in and you need the camera to shake from an earthquake. But otherwise, not so great. So a tripod you can get at your local pawn shop or even your Walmart for, you know, 10, 20 bucks. And they just have things that uh, screw in like this. So, yep, that concludes our tutorial video. Stop motion animation is pretty easy, but uh, with these tricks and tips, you should be able to make it even more amazing. Catch you guys later.